Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Rostar. The Ministry of Education continues to work towards addressing and resolving issues within our traditional educational system. Now, Student Support Services Division Manager, Dr. Ayinka Nurse Carrington, she joins us to explain in greater detail some of the initiatives spoken to by the Chief Education Officer. Welcome once more, Dr. Carrington. It's been a while that we've spoken, but I want to start off again from the ground up, please, in terms of the role of the SSSD units. Thank you. Hi, DK. Student Support Services Division provide that ongoing support for our students to maximize their learning potential. In that division, we have four main units our guidance and counseling division that focuses on supporting students in the area of personal social development, career development, academic development. And they use it via a more prioritizing that preventative and developmental work with students in their classes. Some of the services of the guidance counselor will be group guidance, educational advising, career advising, information dissemination. Our next unit in student support services is, is the DIU or the Developmental Assessment and Intervention Unit. And that unit hosts our psychologist. We have clinical psychologist, school psychologist, and educational psychologist. And their role is to provide that intense psychological support for our students. They use those experiences and work with, with our students for developmental and emotional needs, and also students with intellectual challenges. Our special education unit offers that diagnostic screening assessment for our students, and they also provide those intervention services. They work with our special needs students, and those services ensure to assist our special needs students to benefit from equitable access to education and opportunities available to these students. Some of their services are namely school-based assessment, diagnostic screening, and also specialized therapeutic interventions. And finally, we have the school social work unit, and this is the unit that links the school, the community, the parents, and the communities and governmental agencies together. This unit hosts our house, sorry, our school social workers, and they advocate on behalf of our students. They provide that psychosocial educational intervention in the lives of our students, our families, teachers, and our communities. They provide services such as the crisis intervention, parenting and education, and care and protection of our students. So these are the four main units that comprise of the Division of Student Support Services in the Ministry of Education. And it's interesting, thank you for that. It's interesting that when we just spoke, you were fresh, newly minted in, in the position. Uh, are there any areas or changes of focus from you, from that conversation to this one, where you're saying, okay, well, these are the things that we're working with, because we want to talk about the main areas of focus just now. Yes, indeed. We have had some developments. The last time we spoke, DK, we talked about the whole ins institution of the restorative practices. And soon added to Student Support Services Division would be our restorative practitioners as an additional arm to the support given in our schools. And main areas of focus, when we, when we look specifically at the re-engaging for success or the school improvement project, what are some of those things that you're saying, okay, well, these are the things that are at the top of the totem pole? For the SSSD, our main areas would be that strengthening of support in the area of guidance and counseling and school social work. So over the last couple of months, we have engaged in the hiring of guidance counselors, school social workers, senior school social workers, and school social work assistants to assist in that supportive aspect in our schools. And we are really focusing 
also on those schools of focus. So we are ensuring that the schools of focus have their resident guidance counselor and resident social worker to assist in the needs of our students. Do you have an idea of, in terms of, I know there are best practices in terms of possibly 10 students to one individual. This is, this is, this is not the exact thing at this point in time, but are we kind of close to that? And if not, is it a matter of trying to increase the size of the of the teachers' toolkits as well, so they have a little more capacity? How are we on on that front? In terms of best practice, we are not really on board in terms of the amount of the counselor to student ratio. We, we our schools are pretty large, but we have a very good system in place. Some um, in some of our areas or districts, we use what you call a cluster approach, where we may have the support of several officers to treat with incidents in a school. So that assists in making the job a little lighter for the officers who are on the ground. We also may use that in terms of our group group counseling sessions or if we have something called crisis interventions we have crisis in schools and we use a cluster approach to deal with the crisis that we have in the school systems and as always is and i think it's always important to be able to have a mixed methods approach so we use we're using this approach in addition to so everything kind of scaffolds around the most important individuals the stakeholders in the equation but and um, say saying that you're working towards getting to those numbers that you'd like to. Uh, what, what, is the, what is the latest update with regard to staffing? Who do you need? Do I need to try to dust off my application to get a teacher badge? Or what, 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 what are some of the things that you're looking at with regard to staffing with, in terms of the division? OK, so we, we recently hired approximately 40 new guidance counselors to support in the area of guidance and counseling. 80 school social workers, um, we sent out the ads for that. We also have our, so, we have approximately 54 social work assistants. So we are in the process of getting there. What we are doing is that we are using our team approach. So units are not working in silos. We have the team approach with SSSD and we are working together to meet the needs of the students. It's not always going to be smooth sailing and easy, but we overcome our challenges. Give me an example of that now. And, and, and I'm not asking you specifics, but in terms of some of the silos that may uh, exist and ways that they're navigated so that you're able to have resources spread the way that you need them to. So one of the things that we are doing in SSSD is collaborating with other governmental agencies to work with our parents, for example, and our parents in education programs. We have recently sat down in a meeting with the National Family Services to see how they also can help with the intervention with our students. We also work with MILAT and Serval, YTEP, for those students who may not want to move that academic track but may be interested in other areas to support their growth and development and i think it's really important that we're able to do that because uh, i think as albert einstein talks about judging a fish on its ability to climb a tree you'll always find it wanting so being able to have different sorts of approaches to that better suit an individual i think is really important at this point in time so and the that focus on partnership and partnering, I think is something that is uh, really uh, to be lauded. But we take a short break, and when we come back, I wanna ask about focus on individuals who may have special needs while they're in the traditional uh, education system, how it is you deal with that, and uh, other, other uh, issues around the SSSD. So stay with us, we are speaking with uh, manager, Dr. Ayinka Nurse Carrington, manager for the Student Support Services Division. We return with more. Well, 
welcome back. We are looking at re-engaging and doing so with the manager of the Student Support Services Division, Dr. Ayinka Nurse Carrington. Season anything now, know exactly her plan of approach and how she's dealing with it. Uh, in terms of those four divisions, Guidance and Counseling, Development Assessment, Special Education Unit and School Social Work Unit, focus on children with special needs. And I'm wondering, what, how do you even define that at this point in time, looking at the fact that individuals may have been affected in different ways coming through the pandemic, Dr. Nurse Carrington? So it's, it, we have a various number of our children who are either suspected of having learning challenges or even physical challenges. We have um, our diagnostic specialists and our entire special ed team dedicated to these particular types of students. Our special needs students receive different types of interventions based on their diagnosis. So we may have suspected students and with our suspected students, we use something called the alternative intervention strategy or AIS plan for them. But our diagnosed students, we use what we have to call the individual educational plan to help support these students in our system. So even if that student is suspected of having a special need, we still support the students with strategies, parent consultations, and we try to assist in every way we can from in this division. What was the process though from getting to suspected to having a diagnosis? Is it a matter of referrals? Is it a matter of uh, the parents saying, okay, well, we, we, we think or we need or it, it's not working out for us, can you help? How, take us along that journey, moving from, okay, well, we suspect that possibly in terms of, even like you look at something specific like autism, that our child is on the spectrum. How does that child move from being suspected to saying, okay, well, there's a diagnosis that we can work with because we now know that this is here and we have those parameters to work with? Okay, good question, Nikki. In terms of that process, it, every child that comes through SSSD starts with a referral. Whether it's a referral from the school or the parent, it starts with a referral. And from that referral, we move through a process. So teachers may have observed something or the parents may have observed the, the problem. And if the problem persists, it may go to something called our SBIT team or school-based intervention team to have a look at some of the observations from the teacher or even discuss with the parents some of the observations that was brought to their attention. From that, after those students are looked at from that level, what happens now is that that particular case is now transferred or, as we say, referred to another level of our MDT, which is the multidisciplinary team, which comprises of all the persons from the units that we just discussed. And on that team, of course, specifically, we have our special education officers and our psychologist who will provide that deep look into the observations made by persons. And once these observations are found, what happens is that the process now comes down to whether we have to produce a psychological evaluation on the child in terms of a psychoed, or we may even get medical referrals from doctors stating the condition of the child. So that will help us to support the child in the process. So everything starts at the referral, either from the school or from the parent. And I really like the fact that you said that there's the opportunity for all those uh, specializations, for want of a better term, to treat with that individual under one roof, that is the SSSD, because there may be something that one person misses that another one gets, so that multidisciplinary team, I see the value of it. And I think it's something that really should be loaded, like I said before. But uh, is it a matter sometimes of, a case-by-case -case basis, or have there been best practices seeing, okay, well, this person, they have special needs, they can function in this, quote-unquote, normal school environment, uh, and 
it, is that part of the conversation as well? Each case is unique and is, and, and is assessed as such. So we tend not to group children, but we tend to look at each case individually, giving it our full attention. But having children in school is one thing, but children go home to parents and guardians. What kind of support does the SSD offer? Is there any programming for parents or caregivers as well as the students, and sometimes possibly even both of them at the same time? Well, we have our parent consultation and our special education officers would have those consultations with the parents to advise them, to guide them, and even to support them. We also have our parenting and education program from our social work division. And our school social workers also make home visits. So they are there to get that intimate one-on-one -on -one session with parents and families. And at that level also, they would provide the necessary support. So parents can reach out to us. We are always willing to work with the parents. Once we are able to give them the necessary support, we are there to, to ensure that is given. How do parents reach out? Is it a matter of going through the schools? Do they contact you directly? What, what, is, that, what is that like? They can go through the school. So once a child is in school, they are free to let the class teacher know, and then the process of the referral begins there. And is so there even any... if you just want to speak to an SSSD officer, we in, in some of the schools, we have our SSSD officers in place. We have the guidance officers. We have the school social workers. We have even some special ed officers in the schools. So they can reach out to the SSSD officer in the school and they can share their concerns and then the right officer will take over the case as need be. Can a parent do that for another parent? I, and I'm, I'm just seeing... I do like how this treats with that child, you know, or when it comes to homework or when it comes to something from school. Can, so can that referral take place like that you, as well? You can, not a referral, but the parent can have a conversation to raise concerns. Definitely That something. parent can speak with the principal or the, the teachers or even the officer on, on hand and raise a concern. But of course, we cannot go on the notions of that parent. It will have to be properly investigated and in the, in the right measures. But yes, parents can raise concerns, yeah. And I'm glad because many things, be, be, even before they get documented properly, I think sometimes they happen on an experiential level, anecdotal level. So in terms of getting information from different places, because three people might buy the same thing from a, from a store, but for different reasons. So in terms of looking at what it is, the the vision can treat with at that point in time, I think is very important. But Dr. Nis Carrington, we want to thank you very much for your time. And I'm hoping that we able to have another one in, in short order. SSSD manager, Dr. Ayinka Nis Carrington on In Depth with me, DK Roster, on behalf of the entire TTT News team. Thank you so much for joining us.